Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Indie Corner Radio. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I've got my awesome, awesome guest here. Uh, we were just talking about it before the show. We haven't talked to each other for like seven years uh, on our shows, I don't think, on the show. But uh, I had him, I used to have him for my guest as uh, on uh, Blog Talk Radio when I did uh, Indie uh, Independent Corner. Uh, so this is the new Indie Corner Radio because Independent Corner got stolen by some people, by the way, and I had to change it to Indie Corner Radio. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty pissed off. But please welcome Adam Steigert. How you doing, Adam? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. As always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Again, we haven't spoken for so many years, man. It's been an interesting career since we've spoken last, you know? Yeah, you're like, oh, video chat. I was like, wait, we didn't do video chat back then. It was Block Talk Radio, and that was all through the phone. You know, you'd yeah. have to call up a number and all this other Morgan BS was on that, and... right? Morgan? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I actually got to got to meet Morgan and hang out with her. She came when I was in L.A. She became my uh, L.A. homie. I would come and we would, uh, we would go to the the coffee shop there in Burbank and just uh and just write you know together and stuff like that it was so neat what is she doing is she still working in the arts or is I she think she's acting? left California and went back home uh for a little bit but I think yeah. she's I mean she still has her um California agent and I think she's still getting if she gets a gig out there she'll go but right now she's been concentrating on local stuff in, in texas i think so i'm not yeah. sure yeah, yeah. that's that so funny i love i i adore her i miss you know having her as my co-host honestly i keep trying to get her back in but she's she just like she did it for so long and she's just like i'm done well, you get yeah. burned out you know what it is you got to have a love for this non-stop and live yeah this. and she got busy and she was yeah. in california at the time maybe now that she's not, maybe I can convince her to do some stuff with me, but I don't really want to bother her. I call, I, I message her every now and then, check up on her and see if she's doing good and just been. Um, well, it, if you do, again, just give her a little reminder of that time we all talked together. Adam was talking to me on the podcast about you. Yeah, definitely uh, will. I bet you'll remember that because she's, she remembers a lot more than I remember. I don't remember yeah. shit. I'm yeah. an old man. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're about the same in age, aren't we? I'm 36 at this time. Oh, no, uh, I'm 41, so a little older. A little older, not, sure. Five years older. That's, yeah. Not, wow, that was math. I did math. Uh, well, it's um, an easy number. It's an easy yeah, number. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for making me who I felt right then and there that I was doing good. And you're like, <laughs> eh, man, it was easy. Uh, well, bring me down to earth. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Sorry about um, that, my friend. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Uh, Adam, I, you know, yeah. So we're going to go into some more stuff like, because I, I think back then I wasn't as, I, I don't know. I, I, I would love to say that I've matured as a, um, you know, as an interviewer, but back when I'm listening to, I have a bunch of throwback Thursdays that I do. And I, I listen to some of those and I'm like, Ooh, cringy. Um, and I'm like, really, I asked that question or, I did that and stuff. So I'm hoping that maybe now I, I've, I've learned a little bit more. Um, but my big question now is never really ever got into your childhood and yeah. stuff. Were you sort of always like this gung ho filmmaker guy or were you, is, did that sort of become something that you ended up doing? That's a good question. I actually don't think I've ever even really talked about it too much publicly. Um, I as a kid, I was always wanting to be an entertainer. I always wanted to entertain any fashion I could. And ever since I was a kid, you would go back and ask my grandparents because I was raised by my grandparents. What did he want to be when he was a kid? And it was always film something, you know, director, producer. He wants to make a movie. Um, I didn't have the best upbringing when I was very young. And then I had a little bit of a situation as I got older with my parents. So a lot of that art became a way of venting my frustrations and venting or expressing myself. So that is really how I developed into that career. But I was inspired by like people like my grandparents, people like George Romero, you know, 
um, people like uh, teachers, just regular old teachers that had taught me in the uh, the arts throughout the years. Mary Finnerty is one of those individuals I would really like to give a shout out to. But anyways, I, the, my my childhood um, was it, was it was tough. I had a lot of tough things that happened when I was a kid and that helped me create and be the artist I am today. Oh, so you said George Romero. I want to get back to that. Uh, was it yeah. like the the Dawn trilogy, the, the Dead trilogy of uh, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living it, Dead? It was. It was. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, there. When I was a kid, we would have TNT Monster Vision. You probably remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Monster Vision or Horror Nights or whatever they were. And basically, the when I was a kid, the first one we ever saw was Return of the Living Dead. OK, oh, yeah. you know, the kind of spoofy one. Right. So I thought that was part two. So I'm like forever in my, you know, my young childhood, I was always like, well, where is part one? What is the first film? Because this says Return of the Living Dead. There had to be something before it. Right. So I ended up coming across Night of the Living Dead. And as you may know, Night of the Living Dead has a very different tone than mm -hmm. Return it's not of the comic -y. Living Dead. It's not funny. No, no. So I watched a few minutes of that movie. I was in, it was in black and white. It scared the shit out of me. So my grandfather had to watch it with me just until uh, it was done. So I could actually say I saw it. After that, I found out there were sequels to it. And I was like, I was excited about it. And um, so then, yeah, I, I started looking into his dead series and uh, Dawn of the Dead was next up to bat. And uh, I, I just loved that story. I loved the art behind it. Uh, the cinematography, the story structure, the the epic scale made on such a condensed budget in a sense of like Hollywood mainstream film at the time. I, I just um, I'm, I he's an icon to me, you know, an, an idol. Um, one of my highest achievements, and this could be a, a silly achievement, if you will, uh, was having my name linked uh, to George Romero on an IMDb uh, press post once. <laughs> that was just that was just a lot of fun because I'm like, I really have made it where my name is hyperlinked in blue that has George Romero's name on it. Oh my God. It was a thing. But anyway, what was it for? What was it for? Uh, I want to say it might've been um, either Ambus alien invasion or a grim becoming. Uh, I want to say, I think it was a grim becoming. Is it what uh, I, yeah, I would, I would imagine that would be, but what, like, what was the link? Um, oh man, it's been so long. It, it was just, uh, it basically referenced his name in the press release oh. and, um, about my inspiration and all this uh, about George Romero. And I, and that, that's all I can really remember from the article, which is probably bad that I only remember that part, but uh, just to be tagged in his name, actually in my office behind me, um, I actually have a check from George Romero from Dawn of the Dead. It's signed and everything from uh, George Romero. Obviously, it's authentic and he had to get a praise and all that nonsense. But yeah, he he ha actually have his signature uh, right there, right behind uh, this here green screen, right in the back of the room. Nice, nice. Um, so yeah, so did you check out like? Were you are you one of those people that loves to go to like all the the sites and stuff? Did you go see like the uh, the mall that Dawn of the Dead, you know, I did. was in? Three times I saw the Dawn of the Dead mall. Uh, each time the the area got smaller and smaller for George Romero's like shrine that was there. And uh, have you ever been there to the Mineral Mall? I have. No, here's the funny thing. I went uh, when I was with a bunch of friends and we were like sort of all hung over from going to a horror convention and mm -hmm. stuff. And so I, I don't think I was completely 100 percent like. Like, like there, I wasn't driving or anything, you know, but I was like, not, you know, I was kind of a little sick, sick, but I was, uh, but there, my friends were like, Hey, we're, we're in, uh, Pittsburgh. We're right by the Monroeville mall, you know, let's go and, and check it out. And, um, I, I've seen, I'd seen Dawn of the Dead, but I wasn't a huge, you know, not a big zombie fan. But yeah. um, I, uh, you have to go see the, you have to go see the mall. So we went there. I wish we, it's back in the day when I was never taking pictures or doing anything like that. I do that now more, and yeah. uh, and so I'm kind of bummed out about that. But maybe you know, I'll, you know what's funny about that? Around. You know what's funny about that? My grandmother, uh, when I was in high school, because I again I was raised by them, she said to me, "Marry uh, a girl that loves the same movie that you do." And I said, okay, 
Uh, and I got, I was, I, I have my wife, Kristen, who uh, actually has a big tattoo of Flyboy on her arm. <laughs> and that was done before our time together. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because like she's basically embroidered or a, a logo to the George Romero film. So that was I, it, right? You saw that and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to follow yeah, my grandma's. This is the, this is the woman. <laughs> I follow my grandma's orders. Did you ever tell her that? I'm sure you did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She hear she's heard that story probably t- so many times. She probably hear it now watching this and roll her eyes. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's sweet. I, I love that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so you, you got inspired by, you know, all these great people you went off to make movies, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, what was like, did you start with short films? No, um, I actually, I went right into it. Um, ah, of course <laughs> I went right into a, uh, feet first. I mean, they weren't great films, of course. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I went right into just making as, as big a film as I could right off the get go and let her for a couple of years. But, you know, we made what we did. <laughs> we did what we could, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, exactly. That's what you that's all you can do. Right. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's a good learning experience. I have other friends who have talked about, you know, that they went into making a feature film before starting off on shorts. And they're like, man, I really should have started off on shorts. But, you know, they finished their films. Well, and, the the um, way that I looked at it is shorts, in my opinion, this is my view just from being in this business as long as I have, they they don't generate the money that a feature will. Right. Okay. So I, I always was underneath the impression, don't do fan films, don't do feature film, or don't, excuse me, don't do short films. Pardon me for saying it like that. Uh, always stick to the, you know, the full film hour and a half, at least go for that. And over the years, my films actually have gotten smaller than an hour and a half. They've gotten to an hour and 20, hour and 15. And then, you know, one of the last ones I just did was a, a web series um, called the Grim Miniseries, uh, Final Fracture. And that that series, uh, man, it was all together. Once we released it as one film, it was 44, mo- uh, 44 minutes or 46 minutes, I should say, uh, from title credit to the end. So, I mean, you know, now they got ads. They fill up those spaces with all those ads, you know, those 15 minutes of ads. So it becomes like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Or at least makes the hour uh, a cruel, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Which maybe that's why they do it. Because I was wondering always why Tubi lets you have shorts, you know, like I'm like, yeah, that that it seems very YouTube, you know, like not not what I imagine to be to be. But, um, you know, but the, here's the thing that I <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the thing I've seen these days. Everybody is all about short little bits underneath a minute. You know what I mean? They want it edited down to underneath a minute because they just want to keep scrolling and seeing what's up. That's why film right now is not doing super great is because all this social media technology that we have at, at our fingertips by our phones, it is just making feature films not as exciting as they once were, plus all the drama that we've spoken about with Marvel and uh, DC off, off camera. I mean, all that stuff has hurt the industry in big ways in, in the entertainment industry. You know, I I kind of agree with that. And I was actually, so I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, and we're talking about Marvel and I kind of just mentioned, I mean, this is a sad thing to say, but I think comic movies are dying. And, uh, and, and that to me sort of, cause I know like, like Marvel said, Oh, we got the next 10 years. DC says we got the next 10 years mapped out. And I'm like, dude, I don't think you have 10 years, man. No. Like, if you guys don't, if there's not come some kind of resurgence, you know, and that's why, like, uh, DC, Marvel is, like, struggling right now to, like, you know, oh, we, we got to we gotta push things back and, and you know, all this other crap. And I'm like, dude, um, what, what you need to do is you need to go back to what you were doing, which is, like, maybe two movies a year, if that you know and stuff so that you know people aren't getting fatigued and getting you know tired of all well, this. you know what it is i don't know if people are so much fatigued i i do think there may be superhero fatigue setting in but i think what it is is between the the, the public policies and uh public outbursts from the companies i think that has hurt them like um pretty bad i think like warner brothers especially disney is experiencing it but you can't continuously put out subpar films 
or subpar TV shows or incomplete uh, projects. Because the moment you start doing that, as we're seeing right now, the interest level starts coming out. Because what what was it? They put out like 10 or 14 films and, and with including the TV series in like the last two or three years. Mm-hmm. And most of them are not praised. I'll say that. Most of them are not praised. Um so I mean what what my favorite uh, films of phase 4 may be different than of what yours are in phase 4. Well, uh, let but, me know, let me know what are your favorite. I want to know that stuff. Right, yeah, well currently Black Panther Wakanda Forever is up there. Surprisingly, I was actually surprised how well I liked that film. Um but Loki, Loki was really good. Loki was good. Uh, I did not care for uh, Thor as much as I was hoping for. I was kind of bummed out by Thor. Um, the beginning was great and epic, man. I was like, why did the Guardians have to leave, man? Because them yeah. working with Thor was fun, and I enjoyed that. But then once they left, it was sort of like, okay, now what do we? But they edited. We... They they cut it down so dramatically, like they really cut down the role of the Guardians in that film. Like they should have used that more to their advantage mm-hmm. than some of the other things. I don't like how that movie ended either. With uh, is it alter? Uh, who is that at the end? The kid, uh, Eternity, is I think what her name is supposed to be, or something like that. Yeah, and no, you're talking about love. Oh, love is that who it is? Yes. Yeah. Love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, I mean, here's just an example of that. I mean, that doesn't interest me. I understand you're building the future, but at the same time, give me a story interesting enough so that I want to keep following the future of these characters. Yeah. Well, you don't have a future if you bomb. Yeah. You know. Like, that's what people don't realize and think about is the fact that, you know, you can say, oh, I'm going to set this, like the Eternals, the Eternals bombed, like, badly. Yeah. And they're like, you know, oh, we have all these plans for the Eternals. And I'm like, well, you know what, you're not gonna, you know, like, nobody's gonna care about your plans yeah. because, and I, like, people keep saying, oh, the Eternals are gonna come back. And I'm like, I really hope not. But if or they the, if they come back, let them be split up in different films, scattered throughout whatever. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking you like know, we never got introduced to these people, yeah. and people are like, "Oh, you never got introduced to Guardians of the Galaxy." I'm like, "The Guardians," but the Eternals wasn't written by James Gunn, who did a great job with the like that was the best thing James Gunn's ever done was the Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy the first one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like the second one too. But oh, I like the second one too. I'm excited about the third one. Um, yeah, like I'm not happy like about whole... his DC, but I, I'm happy about the third film. I, yes. I didn't mind the Suicide Squad. Um, it was all right. I thought, you know, I, I was surprised how much I cared about a little, little CGI, whatever guy, little guy, that little weird the rat guy, the rat guy that that Our got killed, and then but something? he turns out to be all right at the end. Yeah, you know, spoiler. Which I, Spoiler. Well, I mean, if they haven't seen it by now, you know, Suicide Squad, then I don't know what you're... But I, but we can't forget Spider-Man No Way Home. Man, that was a great film. It was. I, I think maybe Sony will say differently, but I think the marketing... And I think the fact that a lot of these companies right now are not transparent on their stories and relying too much on leaks, but now they're trying to sanitize people that are leaking information, um, you know, or censoring people that are trying to leak information. I think they're hurting themselves by doing all that. Um, I think they should have leaned into the fact that they were going to have instead of make it a big surprise reveal, which all, all of a sudden out of nowhere, everybody already knew mm-hmm. they should have had a trailer that showed all three Spider-Men together, yes. you know, like before the movie, because they did it after the movie. Well, then, the, like, the other, I don't mean to cut you off there. Sorry. Go ahead. Finish. What no, you're trying just, to say. That's, I'm that's sorry. all I'm saying. Oh, I'm my bad, man. Um, I didn't like because I bought the DVD or the Blu-ray rather. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the fact that they advertised it with all this deleted scenes, and then didn't put them on the Blu-ray, and I then re-release the film, re-release the film for us to pay again to see that. I didn't pay for that. I, I don't. I didn't like that. I thought that was bad, distasteful, just like what they did with after home. Um, no, uh, after Homecoming. No, not Homecoming. What was the second one? Uh, no way. Far from home. Far from home. Yeah. Yeah, whatever, man. Those titles are not the best titles. My dad's favorite one, just because he's going to Sicily or going to Venice, uh, Venice, where yeah, where it all. So he just he just likes to see it for all the, you know, uh, Venice uh, places and stuff. I, 
you know, I liked it. I thought it was I thought the second one was good. The first one was okay. Like yeah. it wasn't I I honestly did not care for uh Michael Keaton and that, you know, stuff. Like I thought he was okay, but he wasn't um You know, John Lego Leguizamo, is that how you say his name? He was Leguizamo? supposed to play. Yeah, like Leguizamo, he was supposed to play the vulture. Do you know that? I did not, but And and then Michael Keaton uh, Michael Keaton was originally offered it. He passed on it. And then they had si basically signed from what John Leguizamo says, like, oh, geez, man, John, what John says, All right. <laughs> he, he says they had contracts signed and then they had come to him because Michael Keaton came back to them asking if he could get the role back. And, um, you know, he said, oh, OK. And then they said that they would give him something else in the Marvel series. And I guess that never transpired. That hasn't or, happened yet, but I'm yeah, sure. gave, he gave him a small or offered him something small. And he's like, no, you were going to give me this lead role. And now you're going to take that from like, so yeah, that's kind of messed up, but yeah, that's, that's so Hollywood. I don't, I don't even know why they went crazy about having, I mean, I guess the idea is he plays a vulture and then he also plays Batman. So it's bat and vulture. I don't know. But like, honestly, I like I I didn't like that movie. There was way too much Tony in that movie, and not enough Spider Man. I felt like there it wasn't didn't feel it felt like like they weren't sure if this was going to take off. So they kind of just were like, let's throw in all this other shit. So right, um, right. I I'm I'm very particular about that shit. Um, hey, so. you know what? We all like what we like. You know what I mean. I liked uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, though I liked everything, everywhere, all at once better. Yeah. And I felt like uh, everything, everywhere, all at once got the multiverse stuff right. Like I felt like that was more, uh, you know, Multiverse of Madness than 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 Doctor Strange was. Than Doctor Strange, yeah, yeah, because like they went to more universes, like yeah. in. in the uh in, in in Doctor Strange spoiler alert if you haven't seen Doctor Strange uh he's like you know he's going through all the different things quickly yeah. you see all these different things real quick and they show it in the fucking trailer so right. it's almost like none of that really matters right so then you see that and then he falls down into one area one and then he goes to maybe one other one and that's mm -hmm. it you only get two multiverses the highlight the definitely was uh the illuminati of course that was right and to me that, that was, was the exciting part it was and i think if they got if they got and this is going to sound terrible because this is pretty much the whole movie but if they got rid of all of um uh wanda stuff you know main mainly concentrated on him just going into a, a crazy multiverse and getting, having to deal with the, the illuminati i think mm -hmm. that would have been a better movie because I honestly, I didn't care, you know, like I, I think I love uh, Elizabeth Olsen, but I'm like, you know, like her kids weren't real. So like it, it was almost just, I just didn't care. Well, like, there was just too many holes, just like the entire phase four. There's just too many holes with no answers and well, no structure. Now I want to hear what your thoughts are on, uh, Jeez, we're talking about more of other people's work than yours. Sorry. About yes. That. Well, we can. We we'll can we'll come back to your here. your work in a second. Yeah. Just forget about me for now. Yeah. Let's talk real quick, though. I do want to yeah. know what your thoughts are on, like, because now that Bob Iger has come back to yeah. take over, yeah. I've heard there's a lot of changes being done, uh, and some are amazing changes, and some yes. are, you know, I mean, people are still afraid, like because they're saying a lot of the woke stuff that's happening with Marvel was from Bob Iger, not Bob Chapek, you know, but he's just fired, like probably one of the, one of the wokest people there, Victoria Alonso. So I'm for Marvel. I'm, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Marvel. So I'm wondering if he's, if he's really like now just let's cut down and make this a real, you know, I think what, I think what Chapek did, I was not a Chapek fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think what JPEG did is he really hurt, really hurt the the Disney brand. There are quite a few films that they released, and Pinocchio is a good example of it. 
I, I didn't even watch that entire thing. Um, it got bashed so bad. And it has Tom Hanks. How can you make a film like terrible with Tom Hanks? And why would Tom Hanks do a terrible movie? I know money, yeah. but like, yeah, Jesus, yeah. you know. But then you now they're talking about doing a Toy Story 5. It's because they're running out of ideas. They're not using originality. And Chapek was all a money's guy where, you know, Iger, he is more like a creative guy. And then the money comes as like, the benefit of the creativity. There's no creativity happening. If you don't have creativity or imagineers was what they refer them as, um, you don't have, you don't have like originality. You have continued regurgitated garbage is what you have. Now that the, the Marvel executive you're referring to, she was in charge of like the digital stuff. One of the big mm -hmm. things about um, phase four, everybody hates is the, the digital stuff is not up to par. She Hulk's one of them. I mean, you could probably pick any of the films and say that there's a digital issue that you're just not happy about. How about that? The the head of that kid in Thor. Remember, they went back and they actually touched it up. I think for um, that floating head. I can't remember uh, whose son it was. Uh, he died in uh, Ragnar uh, not Ragnarok. He died in Infinity War. Right. He died in the beginning. Uh, her um. Uh, oh, he, I know who you're talking um, about yeah. Iris Al Elba's character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his son, I think, is Hermione. I, I that maybe not be right. I've been thinking Harry Potter there. Anyways, <laughs> you probably know who I am talking about by now. Uh, um, uh, I thought that was poor. You, you should not release a film if it is unfinished, just because you have deadlines. Push those goddamn deadlines back. Otherwise, it tarnishes your brand. You you can see it's happening now. I, I feel the same way even in indie world. Um, you know, people think if you don't release something quickly, you're and and I I, I get really frustrated because there is a indie filmmaker who can make a movie, shoot a movie in a week or less, and then mm -hmm. he puts out a billion of them uh a uh you know of uh, a year and then he goes and and that's his claim to fame, right? You know, I'm going to go and I'm going to make these and everything. And then that's what people expect now, you know? Yeah. Oh, we expect somebody to go make the, you know, that. But when you're making that, what you're doing is you're making, you're sacrificing uh, quality for quantity. You're Absolutely. like, I can make, I can make 20 terrible movies instead of making just one good movie and right. stuff. And that's what Marvel was doing. You yeah. know, Marvel was, basically sacrificing uh quality for quantity and uh and that was bob chapek's fault because now granted he may not be my favorite but he was forced with the un 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 like daunting task at that time yeah. of yeah. making uh content for disney plus right and i'm like i hate to say it i mean you don't always need new content They've got so much stuff in the Disney vault. Put them on Disney Plus. Say we're gonna be making these things. I'm still waiting for the three men and a baby uh TV series they promised us in you know 2020. That well, never thankfully happened. they just canceled Willow. I don't know if you're a fan of Willow. They've canceled that. I heard it, I heard it was very woke and and very not something I'd be interested. But also, once again, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy, I believe, had her hand in that. And her, I think she needs to go to be completely honest. She needs to you. go. Yeah. And I, I was telling somebody the other day, I think she has something on them. I think she has something on Disney because there was a time where they were about to let her go, mm -hmm. you know? And all of a sudden, uh, she, uh, like they, they weren't going to let her go, but she had her, her contract was for a renewal. And yeah. I'm like, this is the perfect chance to be like, oh, yeah. Recent. That was like within the last two years. Too. I know, right? Yeah. There was, that was like perfect time for them to go, okay, well, you've done a, you've done a great enough, you know, great enough. But I, I think we're going to try to find, you know, somebody to fill your shoes. You know, John Favreau, like give him that position because he's killing it with the Mandal. Well, he was. I've heard new yeah. Mandalorian I episodes. I haven't been able to stomach season three so thus far. Yeah, I've heard that. Is, uh, I, I haven't seen couldn't. it yet, and I'm kind of sad about that. Um, Me too. Me too. I think uh, I think there's gonna, once again there's going to be another like uh, bye bye girl. You know, let's let's get this let's get this in check because I mean when when it becomes like one of the lowest rated 
uh, Star Wars stuff. You know what I mean? Like it, that's bad for Mando. Yeah. I mean, considering Mando first two seasons amazing, and then his arc in Bo- Bo- Boba, Boba Fett. Fett was like yeah. amazing. And yep. now I've heard the third season. They just, I guess they just, uh, I, I, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I watched I the first episode, and I after I watched the first episode, I said I don't think I'm going to be rushing to see the second. So yeah, so whatever that 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 tells you. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But you know, I mean, that's so. I, I mean, honestly, Disney is doing what Disney does. Warner Brothers. We were talking about it before the show, because um, you were saying you you're you're not you're not a fan of what they're doing, yeah. and um, I was like, well, that's because of Discovery, not that's like all Discovery coming in and and needing to change things up, which I I get it, like money and some yeah. of the stuff that they're doing, like fixing some of the things that um, like Warner Brothers with like the Conjuring series and the Conjuring stuff, amazing. Yeah. Oh keep, yeah, keep doing that. You know, what you third one that. lacked a little bit, but that was because of probably the, the pandemic at the time. I think so too. Yeah. And uh, I think it wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't my least. I, I, I still don't like the nun or uh, or uh, curse of La Llorona that much. I think they're oh, I, okay, I can't stomach but... curse. Curse of Long. Yeah. I I have not fully watched that entire film through either. I, I had to for a uh, doing <laughs> reviews and stuff and uh it's okay like it's you know it, it just doesn't feel like it's in the same universe like they throw they shoehorn oh i was the you know priest who dealt with a doll you know kind of thing and and stuff and they even have a deleted scene where they mention the warrens but they don't they don't have it in the movie and i'm like it, it doesn't even feel right that, yeah. it doesn't matter because yeah. like it just doesn't even feel like it's in the same like well, that's universe. why i didn't go and see it in the theaters is because i originally thought it was part of that conjuring universe and i like that universe you know, they have goods and bads but i like overall the the story arc um but um you, you know i didn't know that was there so i didn't end up going to see it so um i ended up watching it at home like i think on netflix or some other type of streaming service and i said uh, or at least the first opening to the to the car where you saw in all the trailers with the you know the girl trying to get into the car, the ghost girl, or whatever. Um, but after that, I really did not go much further. That was after the car accident scene. I think underneath the bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where that is in the film, but yeah, that that was the last scene. I, that's, I think that's in the beginning almost. So, well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, it 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 wasn't the greatest, but it was it was okay. You know, like whatever you know, it was. It, it was better than some of the DC shit that's coming out. So like, I can't, you know, yeah. like I'd rather watch that. And I'm, I'm into horror and I'm into comic books, movies and yeah. stuff. And yeah. so, I mean, it is what it is. What were you saying? I was going to say, you know, I just thinking, I started my filmmaking career, right. Kind of when Marvel started making their filmmaking career. And one of my first films, I said, you know, what'd be cool uh, seeing what the MCU was, do- MCU was doing at the time with uh, Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, I said, you know, I should try and do that. I should try and make a shared universe of films. Right. So that is transmedia been- there. Yeah. So since then, all my films in one form or another connect to the previous one. But you don't have to see that one previous to see the one that we're currently on. But if you have, right. you get those little extra nods and tidbits in there and story arcs. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy because we're talking about Marvel. I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I kind of started right when they kind of started. Uh, Did you have your own Avengers, do you think? Like, have you, uh, yes. you know, put them all together? I have. Horrific Evil Monsters. Yeah. The Horrific Evil Monsters. So tell us about that. Like, what, so well, was that really like, did you think, oh man, this is my adventures? And you're I did. It? I did. I wanted all the colors to be like very vibrant. Uh, I wanted it to feel like uh, very comic booky. Um, but yeah, I had been setting the seeds for, or sowing the seeds, I should say, for quite some time. And it's interesting because originally, uh, when we were talking about doing uh, the Rivik Eel Monsters, uh, 
we were originally going to have some of the characters from previous films return as like the ensemble. The problem is um, over the years between egos and different um, production companies coming in to, to make these films, uh, you know, a lot of people became disconnected with one another. So when we went to make the Rific Evil Monsters, I looked at that and I'm like, how do I now bring these characters back together, even though none of these actors want to return for these roles? So I had to basically recraft the story within it to make that make it all fit in a very cohesive uh, and respectful manner to what had come before. Yeah, you know what? That's that's a good point, because sometimes we don't think about it, but like, you know, time, you know, after a while, people tend some people tend to not like it other people or whatever we live in a live in a terrible time right now i feel like where people just like hate on somebody and then somebody goes well i don't like that person either even though i don't know them i'm gonna block yeah. them preemptively block and i've i'm not gonna lie i've done that to myself and i feel yeah. now that I, now that i'm like calling myself out on it i'm kind of noticing that you know look i'm you know, if somebody says, oh, I don't like that person, my thoughts shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I'm down to not like them. It should be it should your be own, exact your opposite. own feel to it. Yeah, yeah you, it should, should be you like, should put your own interpretation to it or view. Who knows? I mean, somebody you may not like, I may like for completely different reasons and whatnot. I mean, if they yeah. screwed you over badly, I mean, I may be aware that not of that situation. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. Trust them as much. But I don't I try not to tell too many people not to like somebody i just oh yeah uh sometimes you know of course if you don't like somebody you're gonna let them know like okay well you know i've done that before too like a, a friend of mine was dating somebody i didn't like and i uh, i let her know you voiced she, your opinion on that yep and then she deleted me Ooh. and now we're friends again well that's so, good. because she realized how much of a jerk he is you know <laughs> and stuff like i was right she go figure there you go now you're uh, I'm never I'm never right. So when I'm right, you know, like I'm you gotta I, take those. I know, I'll take that for a win. Um <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. Buy um, that for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> now that is one reboot I would like to see because Peter Weller, uh or Peter Walker? Weller. Peter Weller. Weller, right. Um, I would love to see a reboot of Robocop with him returning, but he's getting old too. Yeah, I don't think he would be turn unless he played someone different like if he played like the boss you know mm. or something you know i'd be down with that but I would, I would want a younger um that that seems to be the thing like you know james gunn's getting a lot of crap for his young superman shit and i'm like nobody wants to see you know a 50 year old man already play somebody for 20 more years and people are like well why is he gonna play some like dude are you kidding me they're going to be there for 20 years. Like that's just, yeah. that's just the, that's the standard now is, you know, and so they don't, you don't want somebody they, old there you know? again, though, that is a problem because <clears throat> they're not bringing any new people into these movies. They're bringing returning, repeating people with their families. And if it's the people like you and I, who are the diehard fans of these types of genres, Stop going to them. Stop bringing our children. Stop bringing, you know, people doing those events and stuff. It hurts their brand. And I think they need to to start really thinking about it, that the adults in the room, in this case, we're talking about DC, all seem to generally want Henry Cavill. There was a way, mm -hmm. in my opinion, there is a way to have done this in a very tactful way in the multiverse. I don't think you needed to just say... We're done with Henry Cavill. The story's done. We're, you know, the whole Snyder stuff is, is done. I think there could have been a, a happy medium with that, with Snyder fans and the DC brand, at least to bring them into the multiverse saga. And then when they're in the saga and, you know, you finish the, the Henry Cavill stuff, then you go over to this other universe and you start getting these new characters as like the beginning stones of a new, a reboot, as you will, um, of these same characters already grown to love. But now I've been totally recasted and we had done justice to the characters we had brought before. And that's why I think the multiverse is such a great thing for Marvel is because it will allow those characters to continue on indefinitely if they're done properly. Because there's not there's there's more than enough stories. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's more than enough universes. 
hey, after Secret Wars, maybe they just do a full reboot of the entire franchise. Who knows? You know, and they go to a different universe, maybe. Maybe they, they go to a completely different universe and tell a yeah, story. Yeah, it's not, what, 616 or whatever? What yeah. Was the what, the one that... we're in currently is 616, but, like, they were just in, what was it, uh, multiverse. I don't know what it was, multiverse anymore. See, that's how much these films are just kind of rolling off me. I could tell you stuff about Infinity, uh, Infinity War, Inven- uh, Endgame. The She's films probably have come seen before. those a lot more. Yeah, of course uh, I have. You know, Because they're entertaining. Yeah, I know I, I agree because that's why I got in. See, I didn't get into Marvel and DC, mm-hmm. and this is going to give me a lot of trouble. But I mean, obviously, I as a kid, I grew up like loving Wolverine and and the X Men and and other stuff like that. But like, I didn't get into like the MCU till 2020. You know, till Ooh. basically the whole world kind of like wow. you know because I was like I want I wanted Disney Plus not for all that not for Star Wars. I wanted it for some of the old school movies that yeah. Disney had. And then I got hooked into the world of Marvel. And I was like, I was like, wait. So I started watching from like Iron Man and going Ooh. like, you know, up. And I yeah. was, it was almost, it was new to me. And then it became even bigger and bigger. And then I started doing a lot more research and, and, yeah. you know, and everything like that. So I'm not, I'm not like the guys that have been there since like the beginning. They've been doing all those videos since, you know, um, like you, but like there's these guys that do these videos um, and I love them, you know, but I don't, I don't know as much as they do like about like, Oh, this is what, you know? And um, so I was watching uh, one of the, one of the channels is a cosmic circus or cosmic. Yep. Cosmic circus. No, there's cosmic culture. Cosmic, cosmic culture. culture, sure. I know them um, too. God, so many cosmics, are they? Yeah. Like, do they all like? I don't know. Whatever. Well, when the name uh, sticks, you got to go with what's good, you know. All right, and, and you know, it's not like they're ripping each other off or anything. You yeah. Know? But so, you know, I was listening to him talk today. I don't know if you saw his newest video, but he was talking about. Um, and spoiler alert, if you have it, but he was talking about um, the uh, basically what's going to happen with the Marvel universe now, you know, with all the phase with phase five and the fact that just this year alone, we're going to have seven projects, you know, three movies and four shows, you know, I think, I think you're going to see a delay on that six. So three, three and three, I think, you know, I think they're going to push it back. I think they're going to push it back because no, he, he, he said, these are the ones that, these are all that's still announced that are was, coming this year, twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, so he said, obviously, we already had Ant Man. Then we've got um, Guardians of the Galaxy in May, yep. June. We have uh, what's that the one? Marvels. Uh, no, no, June. That's not, in November. That's, that's in November. Yeah. June. We have uh, Secret Invasion. Um, in August, we have X Men ninety seven, which is weird that they're doing it now. But I'm Mm -hmm. guessing that might tie into. I think they're doing what DC has announced that they're doing, which is they're doing their shows and they're kind of tying them into the live action stuff. So Deadpool's coming around next year, so maybe they want to get X Men, you know, out there, um, whatever. So X Men '97, like I think August or or September, something like that. And then, uh, then Loki is pushed for the fall, and Mm -hmm. then Marvels. And then there was one more project that was. Is it a special out. presentation? Because no, I been... know they've announced those too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't even know if he even counted those, which I don't think he did. So that's a lot. And he was saying like the people were having problems with the fact that there was so much content, you mm-hmm. know, to keep up mm-hmm. with and stuff already. And uh, I just kind of agree. Yeah. You got to pick and choose now, and um, I'm definitely done with DC. I can tell you that. I'm definitely done with DC. Yeah, so you're not going to see The Flash? I've been torn. That's the only film that I've been torn on, to be honest with you. Just I'm, to see Bat- Michael uh, Keaton, Keaton as yes. Batman. Because that's that's who I grew up on, is right. that character. I got the trading cards still from the first film. So with the Joker and stuff, it's crazy. So, you know, to me, to see Batman again, the Batman I grew up on, that that's tough to pass up, um, which is what they're trying to do to begin with, with that. 
Um, but and I love the I love the director, Anthony Muschietti. He did mm -hmm. the It series. I think yeah. he's a great director. Well, it's funny uh, that they got all these horror guys doing uh doing the Lights Out director did Shazam, and uh, he got a lot of flack recently. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I did see the Shazam uh, director. He's like, I'm done doing superhero films. You know what? It's a cop out because they're getting again. You're the when you're a director, producers and directors are different things, right? right. Producers are the people that you know make the project happen to an extent, uh, and the director is like the creative behind the creative eye behind the producer's money, <laughs> if you will. Right. And a lot of people think that the director is the only one that runs a film. Technically not. Maybe on an indie Actually, level. Actually, well, it's the producers, executive producers, studio producers. Those are the people that run these films. Things not used to be different. Not directors. It used to be different. So yes. it used to be that the director calls the shots. The director yeah. comes in. The director is hired. Steven Spielberg is hired to make Jaws. He does the best he can, even though his crew hates him because he's so young, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. You've heard that story, I'm sure. But oh, yeah. Yeah. Jaws Spielberg, fan. You know, yeah, me too. I need to go to Martha's Martha's Vineyard sometime. Like, I want to go too. They Ugh. have a whole tour there. I know. I get. I'm so jealous. I want to go. Do it. Yeah, yeah, I'm eventually. I'm gonna do that someday. I'm gonna go there. I gotta go back to the Kevin Smith stuff, uh, in New Jersey, and I also want to do the Sleepy Hollow. I go on the bridge of the Sleepy Hollow, stuff like that. So, oh, I've got yeah, a lot of shit fun. I want to do. I just haven't, you know. Uh, oh, you haven't done it yet. You, you haven't done still it yet. time. Yeah, still time. You, yeah, still you young. got goals. You uh, got goals. <laughs> young, relatively young enough. Um, you know. But anyway, so yeah, so they they got so much going on. I completely lost my train of thought. Um, visiting places. Well, before then, I think it was Sleepy Hollow. Something. Before then, uh, Marvel. We're we're now just like re re winding. Um, oh God, we're talking about. Andy Machete, I guess, right? Yes, like, Andy Machete, uh, correct. It. Yeah, and all the... the flash. Yes, yeah, so you got all these horror guys. We're out there, uh, and they get the, the chance, you know, to go and make uh, these, you know, these projects and stuff. And um, and then they they get there, and, and, and this is not their wheelhouse. Their wheelhouse is making low-budget horror flicks. Like, Lights no. Out is great. He should work with Blumhouse. But no, mm -hmm. they want them because that's what I was going to talk about, the uh, producers. So back in the day, you would have Steven Spielberg who produce or direct a movie, and he would be the one in charge. And uh, the producers would come in and make sure uh, things were just done on time, you know, and everything. Right. Uh, nowadays, t it's more like TV. See what I'm saying? Like, yep. the world of t television is more like uh, the world of, like, movies today too and so the and in television the producers are in charge you know right and and the directors are sort of just called in to to direct a couple scenes and they don't have any they barely have any creative input and stuff and that and that that brings me to a good point too or it brings us to a good point that's why i've started like self-producing uh most of the work that i've done over the last couple of years like kind of getting away from producers in in some respects because with producers, as much as they're good, they also bring some baggage that is unnecessary um, and it's unwarranted, you know. Um, and that also has played into one of my decisions to start to a outsource material, either working with stock footage type folks, uh, doing CGI more. You know, you started off when we were talking about this becoming more reserved in the digital world uh, of working on creative arts. Uh, that's kind of where I'm going too, and I'm getting to a point where I'm looking at the last series of projects that I'm going to direct. Um, I mean, I've directed over 16 projects at the moment. I'm getting tired, and you know what? People are not people are not amazed as they once were. You know, when I used to make films back in the day, there was something original to it. There was something new. There was something fresh. Not everybody was making movies um, in that regard, or locally especially. So there wasn't always a huge different uh, choice to pick from and, and things of that nature, which is good and bad. But, you know, at the same time, you have to ask yourself, um, maybe I'm getting to a point where I'm outgrowing what is the new norm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I maybe I 
my creative eye is not what it once was. Um, so like I worked with Immortal Masks before on projects instead of working with in-house effects teams to create these things. Um, by the way, they're really good. That's a plug for them. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just getting to a point where I'm really starting to see the politics and just I, I just don't want to be around them no more. I just don't. And I'm talking film related politics. I just. You know, maybe I'll I'm still always going to be somewhere in the film industry because, I mean, you just never leave. I mean, you look at you. You you did start off with films. Right. And now you're doing podcasts. Well, know? I I mean, uh, sort of sort of did podcasts more like I mean, I started with short films I did for for nothing, you know, that I put on YouTube like that just sucked, you know, and stuff. We've all been there. Yeah, which sucks because I can't get back into my old account and stuff and. I kind of want to look back at those, you know, or whatever. You can't, you can't get back onto the YouTube. Account? No, because like it transferred over to like Gmail, and yeah. my old like Hotmail thing won't let me in, and I'm just getting. And I does don't the know channel my old still exist? Does the channel uh, still exist? It's I. Oh, I I I was well. I was an idiot. Well, not an idiot, but I I completely put everything unlisted. So oh, that, nice. Now you you're know, really in trouble. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm done. Um, but just to conclude with this real quick, uh, you know, I I'm I like the marketing man. I like the promotion. I like the press of it all. I like doing those things. Uh, you know, I like the photography. I like the behind the scenes. I like sharing people sharing with people some of the experiences that I have learned over my career. And it's you know I'm going on 16 years now of a career. So. Um, Again, it just goes back to the fact that I want to make stories that people want to see. Um, I was, uh, I don't know if you ever read comments on anything that you post in the sense of like, like films, right? right. Um, you know, various films, each film is different and each film has different uh, comments and stuff. And uh, one comment has stuck out to me pretty, pretty bad. Um, and it happened about two years ago. And the comment was, this director should kill himself. And I said to myself, I, I push, I just stepped back that day and I said, am I really to a point where this, where people fans or other people viewing my work want to just see me killed? I, metaphorically, I'm assuming, but you never know with the internet um, mm -hmm. because they didn't enjoy my work. I mean, you could turn it off. You watched it till the end, yeah, dude, you watched it till the end. <laughs> or even you watch five ten minutes that doesn't mean like you know like but there is an old saying jonathan there's an old saying even bad press is good press well that's true but i had a i know a filmmaker and i'm not gonna say his name just because it's you know it's his story not mine necessarily but uh to give you a point he made movies that apparently weren't received very well and um and a lot of people sent him death threats and yeah. he has a family he has kids he has all this stuff they said they were coming like i think they said they were going to come to his house things like that and he's just he stopped making movies for a little bit now he's has recently said he wants to get back into it and everything and it wasn't the climate you know, the climate is not good to even produce anything right now either I don't know if you're somebody and, trying to get something produced right now. Unless you do it for like nothing, like absolutely yes. no money. Or you do a GoFundMe because everybody seems to to be wanting. I hate I hate Indiegogo now, like or or GoFundMe or you know all that stuff just because. And I mean, look, I love people who support it, you know, and I've done it before, and I don't like it. Like myself, I don't. I feel really scuzzy sending people messages saying, hey, come donate $5 to my campaign. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't hate it when somebody does it to me because I understand, but like, I mean, when no is no, you know, when I say I can't I get do those, it. I get those quite often my own self and I don't produce a lot of people's projects anymore. Um, and the reason behind uh, the reason behind why I do not produce a lot of projects is because I've gotten burned on them before. Mm -hmm. You know, either you don't get the product if you do an Indiegogo and they say, oh, we're going to pro promise you a DVD and then you never get it. Or um, 
you know, you don't know the director well enough or the production staff well enough uh, to see if they're actually going to complete the project in a respectful and, and uh, well received manner. I don't want to be sending money to somebody that I think that there's going to be like uh, all different types of innuendos or uh, situations happening on set that I, cause I don't know the actor. I don't know the director, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to, I don't want to put my name on something after trying to build a career for 16 plus years um, on somebody else's film, just because I, I get a special thanks and a credit or, you know, I, I produced it, um, and it and people don't like it. Um, so I'm very picky about it. I get those requests. I want to say weekly, somebody asking me to fund their film or sending me a script pitch. I, you know what, if I was asking for scripts, I would say, Hey, send me a script, but I don't ask for that because I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to produce somebody else's work. I want to produce my own work. And I want to share it with the world, what my artistic vision is. Um, you know, so I save all my money for my my stuff, you know, and, and that's just the unfortunate nature. But here's something you should always keep in mind. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, okay, you're not willing to go take a small interest loan. You're not willing to go take out a credit card debt or credit card um, money or whatever in advance on it. You're not willing to do the hard work to go to studios to try and get this money. Using these social media platforms in like Indiegogo goes back to what you felt before, you know, you feel a little, you know, scummy, like you have to take a shower after because, you know, nowadays you have Hollywood mainstream people working on Indiegogo, making their, their projects. And what about us, us little guys? Now we, we can't get funding from Indiegogo because, you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But, but I, with that being said, I have noticed quite a few social media campaigns on that that platform doing very well this year uh surprisingly not a lot of them but there's a couple of them that are doing surprisingly well in the indie community um so we'll we'll have to see how some of those come out but uh you know if you're just not willing to invest in yourself why should i invest in your film exactly and that's the question um that's a good question and some people tell you do not invest in your own projects I don't know why there's that thing, but there's that thing of like, you know, do that. And I, and I can tell you why. You want me to tell you why? People why? won't invest in their own projects because they don't believe in them. They don't believe they're going to make the money back for as much as they're going to want to spend on it. All right. right. So, you know, typically when I make a, a, a feature film, it's in the range between fifteen to $25,000. I have done up to $36,000, um, but I don't do those types of films anymore because- there's just it's just not worth that type of money to 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 do independent film anymore like that. At least for you, me. I mean, you know, you know the uh, the producer of the Killing that was uh, one of the third movie that Stanley Kubrick ever made. He talked in an interview and said that he put up eighty thousand dollars of his own money. Now this is back in understand this is back in nineteen fifty six. So yeah, eighty thousand dollars then is like. Probably, probably five hundred thousand dollars now, you know, or yeah. something. Well, I don't and want to he, say over a million. <laughs> yeah, and he right. asked his dad for fifty grand, so yeah. he got like one hundred thirty grand extra to shoot. So he got like three hundred and thirty dollars to or three hundred thirty thousand dollars to shoot uh, the movie and make it because that's what the budget was going to cost and that's what he believed in. You know, he believed yeah. in the project. You know, he could have made it for two hundred thousand dollars, but he would have. Um, had to, you know, um, had to cut a lot of costs and it would have looked a lot crappier, you know, and everything. And he put his own money in. And to me, that made me, that made me smile when I saw that because, or heard that because I was like, that's amazing. If that guy can go out and do that, I think more filmmakers should, you yeah. know, um, especially since, uh, he was even told that, uh, whoever puts that money up is going to be second to, the company that the first company that put the the money up and everything. Yeah. I think that's an interesting people don't really realize that like, you know, with this stuff because people think in terms of independent film these days completely oh, yeah. like people don't even know like studios, you know, used to do this. You know, they don't do it as much anymore. But they used I, to I, fund these I gotta kind say, of you are, projects. You gotta I, you are so right. Um you are so right when you say that the studios no longer allow directors to direct anymore because they don't. And 
I uh, that's one thing that I like about the studio I work with um, is because I'm also directing a lot of these projects. I have a lot of say in the way that the project is morphed into reality. Now I have two business partners, uh, Kristen Steigert, who happens to be my my wife, and Christopher Burns Jr., who is been my longtime business partner for quite some time. I, I like to say I'm married to two Chris. <laughs> no, nice. um, yeah, and uh, they 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 have both helped me, uh, inspired me on my path to cre- continue to create. Um, and uh, one thing I will say about these two individuals that I would say is different than studios is, is they believe in me. Studios don't really believe in their directors. They just tell them, go out and shoot this. Otherwise, they would let the directors create. They're not allowing that. And um, well, again, I, I mean, we can say the stuff about Scott Derrickson leaving Doctor Strange. Yeah. Because he didn't have any kind of creative input into it. Because how about Edgar Wright for the first one? Uh, Edgar Wright a- was supposed to direct oh, the that first right. Ant-Man. I thought, and he yeah. wrote it. He got a writing credit for that. He got a story credit, I think. You know, something. Story. Yeah. Yeah. He got something uh, from it. But yeah, he was supposed to do the first AM man and then he ended up uh uh then Peyton Reed. Well, I think Peyton Reed has done a great job. A lot of people talk smack about the new Ant Man. And I was just like, it's not any yeah, worse and any better terrible. than and then than whatever. Like to me, it was a popcorn you know, Marvel movie. Like, this is exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to see yeah. Ant-Man. Um, people are like, pointless Bill Murray cameo. I'm like, any any cameo Bill Murray has is going to be pointless. He's not, he doesn't even, I don't think he knows what a Marvel is. He's yeah. just there. He's yeah. like, let me just play this wacky character and then walk out. You know, yeah. like. He's there for the paycheck. And that's what he is. He's there for the paycheck. I mean, um, so it, you know, you know, did you ever hear about uh, how you how you cast uh, Bill Murray? How's you know that? How you have that? to hunt him down. You can't do it by phone. I know that he doesn't answer uh, his phone or something. Well, no. So okay, it's a different. And you have right. there's a specific. Yeah, so he's it's okay. So he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have a phone or he doesn't something with the phone, but you have to call a number. And leave a message, and tell him tell him your number back, and tell him who you are, what you're doing, and then he will, you know, if he likes it, he'll talk to his agent and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if Marvel had to do that, like if Marvel had to call up, you know, or if if he for some reason was like, I'll take a take a lunch with Marvel, sure, but like he did that with the, uh, that's how he got Garfield. So like yeah. he originally did not want to do Garfield like you know like if he had like if they had originally pitched Garfield to him like regularly he would have said no but it said like Joel Cohen and he thought he was working with the Cohen brothers on a Mar- on a Garfield movie yeah that's a big mistake right there yeah that's so, a difference in- <laughs> that would be an awesome Garfield movie though can oh, you yeah. imagine the Cohen brothers doing a Garfield movie oh yeah. For I'm a that. fan of the Coen Brothers. I like. Some I love of them. Work. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're, um, they're good. They're good. They haven't really done anything that I've not liked. You know, I can't point to anything that I don't like. Um, there was one that I I thought could have been a little better. The I think it was the Hitchcock one. Am I thinking of the right one? I'm not sure. Um, it had uh, it had what's her name in it? Uh, Scarlett Johansson. And they oh, were, it was sort of like a uh, a film noir type. I yes. Remember, right. Yeah, and she yeah, did the whole swimming about. bit and all that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I have. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, and yeah. I thought it was okay. It had like Billy Bob Thornton in it, if I'm correct. Like, I think it's been a while since I've seen it. I thought main... George Clooney might have been in it too. Um, I'm gonna have to look this up after we're done. Now, speaking now of. I gotta find this out, especially if it has Scarlett Johansson in it. Um, I could probably find out here. I who is wonderful. Yeah, I love Scarlett Johansson. That's another mistake that they, Disney made was the Scarlett Johansson bullshit. Well, they really, oh, Hail Caesar. Yes, She's that's it. That. That's it. Yeah, it was uh, was it uh, Hollywood fixer? And then, yeah, George Clooney was in that. I was yeah. thinking of the um, there's one that's like the man who um, what was the one that Billy Bob Thornton was in that I sort of uh, there it is, the man who wasn't there. 
That's what I was thinking of. But uh, Hail Caesar, yeah, I would say. I saw that in the theater, and I go, it's okay, but it's not, it doesn't feel like a wasn't typical. my favorite, yeah. It, it didn't feel like it had the quirks that uh, that, that, that the Cohen brothers were known yeah. for. So, mm. I'm Now, all- I'm excited about Evil Dead Rise. I can tell you that. That's on my... I'm excited to see that. I thought the the Evil Dead remake was one of the better remakes we've had. I would say that the Evil Dead remake and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake in the in the the two thousands. I think it was two thousand, maybe when it was two thousand with Jessica Biel. Those are my like two favorite type of remakes that have ever. I like the Friday the Thirteenth remake. I mean, I I enjoyed it. You know. (sighs) Yes and no. I mean, that I'm for me. For me, yes and no. I thought it played on too many uh, uh, stereotypical like tropes from the, the the genre, but then they are the ones that created the genre. So right, so that I didn't can, bother me. Yeah, um, I just think they played it too hammy. I, you know, you put Willa Ford in a, in in any movie, you know, it's going to be hammy. Like it's yeah. just like she is not she's not an actress. She's a singer. She's a wonderful singer, yeah. just not the greatest actress. Um, but that's you know my my particular... know, let, let's not even get on the nightmare on elm street let's just pass that one oh well i wouldn't have talked about that i, I try to i don't even think that well i'm like, trying to think of all the remakes out there that are like really decent and evil dead has all like it stands to me the evil dead remake stands to me as one of the favorites i i like the ash versus evil dead i like the i like the army of dark i never finished the evil dead and it was because i didn't like it because i was liking it. i was digging it but I just never, I didn't get to finish the ending of it and stuff. So eventually I will. It's just. Um, well, it's leaving I, Netflix. If you have Netflix, it's on its last couple of weeks of Netflix. Oh, okay. Yep. Have to yep. get check that. I have to watch that this weekend then. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, I, I like, uh, well, by the time this comes out, I'll probably be gone. So sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, you lost your chance if you didn't see it yet. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I think the state of the film industry, because we, we, we live in a, we live in a world that sort of is always evolving. It's always changing. There's always something, you know, like if you looked, if you were in 1993, right. And then you look at 2023, you know, and, and, you know, completely different times, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and that's wonderful. Like 30 years thing. A lot has changed in 30 years. We still haven't figured out the flying car yet. No, we have not. Maybe that's uh, a good thing. I don't know. I don't, I want a flying car. I would um, like a car that flies. Sure. Or hovers at least. Yeah. Hovers hovercraft. Um, yeah. We haven't really perfected that either. You know, no. um, but maybe like electric maybe. truck. I'd like an electric truck that could go more than 400 miles without having to be charged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, maybe later in my life that'll happen. Maybe there. I mean, you know, Musk is working. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, he's getting distracted with his Twitter shit. So maybe I actually I actually left Twitter because of him. <laughs> I a lot of people I, did. I no longer have Twitter and I do not expect to return to it. Um, I only I only still do it because it's marketing stuff, you know, uh, but I don't yeah. I'm not I'm not on it as much as I used to be. I'm and it's funny because it was like for the longest time I was not into Instagram, still sort mm-hmm. of not like but Instagram is where I can like that's where all the celebrities are now. It was Twitter. Now they're leaving, going to Instagram and staying there. Right. And so I'm like. That's where I want to see Britney Spears and her being happy with her, you know, just would love for her to stop dancing. You know, do this. Oh yeah, she all, I think every video she posts she's dancing in something. Almost, but it's it's like weird, like it makes me feel scared for her, but uh <laughs> but I love her and yeah. I saw like a post last night that uh she posted like a couple days ago or something. Where uh, she was talking about just basically, like because of all the shit that happened to her, now she's happy. That's good you know, for her. Basically, she's it able to live her, her life. Yeah, she's able to to know what she likes and what she wants to do, and she's able to ha- do it herself. And and to me, that just 
makes me smile. But yeah, I, I would I would prefer if she did more of those posts and less of her dancing, like weird and shit. Like it's like I get it. You can post whatever you want now, but sometimes better to do less. You know, less is well, more. Th- again, that's like Gun. Gun should not be making tweets. I can tell you that. I think he should stop that completely because it's only hurting himself and the company. I know. Um, and attacking fans in some way or another. I actually, believe it or not, so somebody from my local uh, sorry, this is all about you and I'm kind of hijacking stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. But, a, uh, but you'll probably get a kick out of this. There's Please. a guy in my local town like that has nothing to do with the film industry, right? Sends me a uh, screen grab and says you're famous and i was like what are you talking about so i look at the screen grab and it's a news article that's about james gunn and talking about him uh getting sort of attacked by tweets you know because that's all news articles are now is yeah. like celebrity gossip on twitter yeah. i'm like who cares like you know, whatever. And that's why, and that's another reason why I left is because that whole Snyder thing rubbed me very wrong. Mm-hmm. And like, I did not use Twitter enough other than to search out gossip leaks regarding DC or Marvel. And I'm like, you know what? DC is burning me and Marvel's starting to lack a little bit. So I'll wait on Marvel. They're still my, you know, still my, my faves, but DC, like that's the only reason I was going on Twitter for the longest time. I'm like, this is too toxic. It's triggering and it's toxic. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm so we live in America. And right now we're living through a period of time in history where things are not as normal as they should be. Um, And whatever that phrasing may mean to someone, um, to me, it just doesn't, you know, there's too much hate between opposing viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Um, There's too much hate between, um, you know, different ethnic uh backgrounds i want to say ethnic disease but i can't even say the word can't roll it off the tongue um but uh backgrounds heritage race sex disability you know um that was always there it was always there but it seems like it's now the forefront in in my view like i personally have cut out a lot of people in my life due to political climate in the the united states during the time this time and that is good and bad but has helped me mentally, but has also created a divide, you know, between two opposing ideologies of viewpoints, things of that nature, and um, only continues to further divide everything, either fan bases, culture, political views, uh, whatever have you. You're just going to get me going on a rant with this one, but um, I don't see any end in it. And that's the problem is I don't see any end in the, the issue with D.C., I don't see any end in the political discord in the United States. I don't see any end in people uh, voicing their complaints on indie film, uh, not realizing or knowing how much work it goes into those films, telling uh, a director uh, to die. Uh, know, yeah, that on. that I would say is a little that's that's way that's taken up way too much. Yeah. I will disagree, though, that uh, that people shouldn't voice their opinion on indie film because if you any just like dc you can voice your opinion on the way dc is and people are like oh but independent films they take so much effort i'm like yeah but you know what you are right at the end of the day when a movie is yeah constructive criticism um or what our opinions are you know this is this is why i'm i'm actually going on a deep dive watching all these Cisco and Ebert, you know, uh, reviews, because yeah. I'm like, can we get back to this where people yeah. like have a good conversation about, about the opinions? films. They don't attack the talent in the directors. Well, uh, Cisco and Ebert uh, well, actually yes, used to do did, that yes. with the horror people. Yes, they They'd definitely like, did. They actually were even known. I think Cisco even made like said, if you don't like this, go send a, uh, here's the address to Betsy Palmer and blah blah blah. Like, okay, well, maybe I'm a little mistaking much. that phrase. I, on that I one. found that out recently, and I didn't even know about that. And I found yeah. that out recently, and I kind of was like, okay, that's that's pushing it a little bit too far because I don't I don't feel like you know that definitely not Betsy Palmer's fault. She's she getting paid. She got paid uh, ten thousand dollars to play Ooh. that role right now. That's but she was there for ten days. 
you yeah. know, which I'm like, where the fuck was she? A thousand she only had a one day. scene. Jeez. She only has one scene where you see her. The rest you can just have some, you know, person with hands that look like hers or something. Don't even I don't need think, her. I don't think culture needs to be censored in that regard. Let me just kind of refix what I'm saying because I do agree with what you're saying. I'm just referring to the facts of director should kill himself, this production. You know, if you're giving constructive feedback or even feedback that is not derogatory, right. you know, that is acceptable. Sending somebody to somebody's address, that to even being sister and eager, I, I, that's not acceptable to no, me. No, that's, that's not, not that's not that's cool. not acceptable. Um, but no, and 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 once again, not saying anything like, look. I, I, you know me. I do Indie Film Cafe. And oh, yeah. we, we review indie films. And yeah. we have what's known as a stinkometer. Yeah. You know, which is a one to ten, the stinky stuff, stinky scale. And oh, there's that rotten might tomatoes mean, too. There's that might there. yeah. mean that yeah. the movie gets a stinky. Now, we, we like to make sure people understand that when we say a movie is stinky, we enjoy it generally. Yeah. Now, sometimes we don't, you know, but we like bad movies. We like movies that we want to show our friends. Well, you and, sat through the whole thing. You, we you, sat to, yeah. We, but this, there's a one filmmaker who got really upset recently that I uh, uh, reviewed his film, and uh, this other filmmaker who wasn't a part of that project but might have been like with other projects of this guy was yelling at you know me and my buddy paul and and everybody that was attached to this uh review and saying that we didn't watch we must have put the you know thing on the fast forward took it too we personal. didn't we didn't watch it you know they they completely missed and then the other guy was trying to point out in a way but she didn't verbally say it right but he was trying to point out that I was, you know, when the when my buddy would say, well, they did this, I would go, well, he, you know, this is why he did this. Because, and I would actually, you know, disagree with him on on some of the stuff the guy was saying. You know, I, I get it. Like, I, I, and especially me, I'm a very big, I, I think things in my creative world, right? So when I watch a film, I'm not judging it based on like whether or not just this is a good film i see the lights i see the lighting oh, yeah. i see the because you know, you're a filmmaker is, right you're a filmmaker and, and i yeah. think that way i think is this really that good or or you know or does this character comes out of nowhere make any sense for the rest of the project because i think right. in writing you know right like what what purpose is this person is it is it for comedy is it funny you know, uh, and the person I think felt like I was a little harsh and I didn't get comedy. And I'm like, I, I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure I get comedy. You know, I see, know what's funny. See, um, now, I don't know if you know this, but I'm working on Ambus Alien Awakening. That's my next nice. project. Nice. So it's a sequel that. to Ambus. Uh, it's the first true sequel I've ever done. Um, but it's like a direct sequel to the first one. I'm in talks with some of the original cast members like Sarah Manzella to return as Lucy Greenheart and stuff. But um, the point I'm trying to make is I didn't want to sign on to a project like that unless uh, it was being done right. Because mm -hmm. Ambus is one of those films that is my personal favorite to have made in my filmmaking career. Fang is another one that is up there. Uh, but Ambus is is my all time favorite. And um so to do a sequel, it has to be 100% right, and uh, that is what we're working on currently. But I, I said I, I wouldn't do another one like that mm -hmm. because nowadays everything is just you know franchise, sequel, sequel, sequel. The originality is starting to get further and further away. So how do you go back to a film? And this film is very much like a 28 days or 28 weeks later style film where you see what happened after the events of the first film, the destruction. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of the CGI already produced and uh, worked with a couple people that, uh, you know, uh, work in aircraft carrier type situations. Uh, and I won't go any further with that. But well, hey, Vic with... Victoria Alonso is yeah. uh, looking for work. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll have to just give her a ring ding, or maybe you can just give her a you know a plug in for me. I don't know. I'm probably never gonna chat with her, but she'll probably listen to this and be like, "Oh God, 
Oh, no. Lord. yeah. I don't want to work with them. Uh, but anyways, that's my next baby, and I'm I'm hopeful of it. But I can relate to what you're saying when you say some of these things. Um, it's all in the writing. You know, the script for Amba's Alien Awakening is is done, but we're still making sure it's better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're doing all the CGI and stock footage work before the film even gets made, or excuse me, the, before we principal photography gets made. So there's big chunks of storyboards in the film already. So that when you're watching, the, you can actually watch the film via storyboards and CGI, um, and then you'll be able to go in there and we'll be able to look at it and say, hmm, is this the right angle for the actor? Are we missing something from this? Um, that is the approach I'm going to with this one. And to a fun element, a lot right. of digital work, you know, but um, yeah, I definitely can relate. I can definitely relate. Well, I mean, my, my uh, partner for Indie Film Cafe, Paul, always says writing is free you know like it's the one thing you don't have to really worry about as far as you know money goes and um in unless you unless you're working even in the studio like you know when you're first writing a spec script it's free you know it's you know or whatever then later maybe they want to rechange it they want to rewrite it they want to do this or that but that's they're paying you then you know and everything but still it's like it's not a lot of money that as opposed to like big budget you know paying the actors paying the special effects and doing all that can i ask you a question can i ask you a question have you ever uh, streamed a a streamed screened i should say a film in the theater before um you mean like our own film or whatever? Yeah, your own film. No, I mean, we haven't done that yet. I mean, it's something we've been thinking about doing. One thing I would recommend, if you ever go in and screen your film in a theater, is like I have this rule. I always have two different spots I like to sit at, either the very front of the film so I can't see the, the people behind's reactions, or the very behind everybody, like the very last scene. So either very first or very last. Yeah, I don't you don't want to be in up. the middle. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't want to hear what people are saying about it during the film. You know, I just want to hear the che- the cheers. I want to hear the boos. I want to hear those things as they're happening in real time. But you get two different perspectives uh, from sitting from the front or the back. And it allows you, uh, if you have this privilege, because sometimes, I mean, over the years, I've been able to do multiple screenings of films. I can sit back and relax and not relax, yeah. stress, I should say. Um, in the back of the theater, just seeing if everybody's getting it and watching expressions, or I can just sit in the front of the theater, not see anybody's expressions, but listen for the, the audio, uh, of people's, uh, views on the film throughout the film. Like, are they gasping? Are they shocked? Are they running out of the, the theater? Are they, you know, all those fun things. So there's just so many different things you, you can do. I agree. Um, I think that's a good, good thing. I, uh, I just, uh, I just watched the room. You know, uh, um, what's the, his name? The Tommy Wiseau movie. Yeah, yeah. And I watched it with with Paul. We went up to see it at the uh, uh, Kimball Theater, and they're they're having like a, a film festival, and they invited Greg Sestero, who's like the lead star. One of the, he's he's Mark, you know, from the yeah. room, and he yeah. was there. Um, and he was there to promote some stuff, and uh, but he didn't sit with everybody, like, and I'm sure he's seen that movie like a million times, like. Because yeah. he goes on tours and tours every year with that room, uh, promoting the disaster artists and other stuff. And um, but anyway, he uh, he was in the back, uh, like he was at the table where he's supposed to, you know, sign stuff. You know, waiting for uh, waiting for people to, um, you know, to be done. But he was like very interested in hearing. Like he was like, "Wow, everybody seems to be really into it," you know. And everything and so many of the men never seen it and yeah. uh were like uh room virgins and uh <laughs> and they were so young they're all like college kids and stuff and um and i loved i love seeing that because uh that that to me is like you know that's a terrible movie and i'm sure tommy wiseau got like well this better kill you know this guy should kill himself you know things yeah. and i'm I like you laugh at that i didn't well, yeah. well here's the thing Here's the thing. Do you think Tommy Wiseau gives a fuck? You know what other people think, really? 
No, but I think you'd give a fuck if somebody came up to him with a gun and right, said, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, you know? but like, I don't, you're not getting that. You're not getting some yeah. actually like sticking a gun in your face. So I, I think the, the lesson to be learned is like, you know, uh, there's going to be, there's degrees of like, whatever. I mean, some people, you can make the greatest movie in the world. Like you can make, I'm going to just say Citizen Kane, just because that's like, the most popular one to say, but you can make a Citizen Kane and somebody is going to say that movie was so terrible that Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that filmmaker never made another movie. And, um, and then you go, are you kidding me? Like that was Orson Welles. I mean, War of the Worlds. Right. But, but people would still say that because we live in a society right now that just allows anybody to say, whatever the fuck they want, whatever the fuck they want to say it. Um, we kind of allow that to happen sort of, you know, we don't, we well, just free speech. Right. Right. And, yeah. um, and you know, you can always respond, I think to those like letterboxd uh, comments or something and be like, Oh, thank you. Well, I'll keep that in mind. You know, when I make my next project, Yeah, I'll, I'll keep you in mind when I make my next project, I'll have a character named whatever, uh, last name whatever your uh screen name is there and have you have him killed you know yeah and yeah stuff. so there you go i mean it's beauty of being a writer is we're gonna we're gonna get shit on all the time well if you if you get a chance to uh check out i don't know if you've seen fang or the Rificula monsters or even I a think so a while stuff. ago but uh i need yeah, to re- if you, rewatch them. if you don't get it if you haven't had a chance yet get a chance to watch it. i'd love to hear you blast on horrific monsters or something i mean talk highly of it of course <laughs> um i don't know i like it's weird i've gotten to that point like because i was talking to some people about it and i was like i don't even know if i want to like review other people's films like yeah on indie film cafe that i know you yeah. know because you know i can respect that sure, i mean it's, I it's hard that. because like i might say something and then people get really offended and and then they unfriend me or block me because you know, and not that necessarily I wanted to work with them, but like I, I'm very much a person who doesn't, I'm a people pleaser, you know, a yeah. lot. And I kind of, you know, you can't really be a people pleaser and make movies. You well, know? that's the truth. That's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the damnedest because, you know, you know, you understand you're not going to please everyone, you know. Right. There'll be people you who love the- your films and people who don't. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, you know, when you're making a film, one of the biggest things that um, I've always had trouble with, not trouble, not trouble, is when you're making a film, you have a cast. I've always built my cast up. And I do that because um, you get more out of your actor if the actor is feeling like they have the power to tell the story that you want them to tell. And um, I look at you know, some of these films and people, like we mentioned earlier on, People don't know what goes into making these films. The egos you have to stroke to get a, a project completed. Now, I have a big ego, but some of these actors out there, their egos are even bigger. You know, what, mm-hmm. somebody is only on a film one day uh, and now they become an actor for life. I mean, come on. I mean, you, you do one film as a background extra and the next thing now you know everything about film. And now, you now you're a screen opinion. queen. And yeah, you're... yeah. Which you know I honestly hate that title, but I, I have screen queen campfire, so I can't say anything. But like, uh, well, you recognize I, it, though. I do. And, and I feel it. I feel like to get to actually earn that title, you have to have at least done three horror films, three like that's my right. thing, you know. At least and there three... has to be a little bit of an age with it, just a little bit. Not not doesn't have to be crazy, you know. Three films uh, would be good, but maybe over the span of like your early twenties or something, or yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, like you, I mean, even you know, kids can be scream queens, especially if they actually been in a bunch of movies that you know. What I mean, um, what but... is it, Jenna Ortega? Who, who's who? Jenna Ortega? She's new to like. I don't want to say she's new, but. She yeah. is somebody that I would call a scream queen, even though she hasn't really done a lot of stuff in a short, but she's done stuff in a short period of time in the horror realm. And she's done is what two I, scream movies and then the year. And then show. Wednesday. Yeah. And Wednesday. So, I mean, I don't know if Wednesday's necessarily horror, but 
It's got horror elements, so it could count, I guess. Uh, I mean, she's sort of, and she's about to do Beetlejuice too, by the way. I heard that, yeah. Be like Lydia's daughter or something, which I'm that like. That would be interesting to see. That would be interesting to see. Um, you know, it'd be funnier if Lydia is played by Christina Ricci, you know, like as, because I don't know if they would bring back, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, the original Lydia. Um, um, I know a writer. I don't know if I they would bring her back. Are they? I heard that they may be. Uh-huh. I heard that she might be the daughter of of her too, like you were just talking about. So the yeah, one, so one that, that would that would be funny. But I think it would be funnier if it were Christina Ricci because you know uh, obviously the Wednesday thing there, you know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you know it's it's you know because you know it doesn't really matter you know if you want a younger you know if you want a younger. Uh, what? They just are they going to explain why? I guess if you put Beetlejuice in the makeup, it won't. It it'll it's just the makeup, you know, or whatever. But like Michael Keaton's older, how do you explain a, a ghost getting older? You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, do maybe ghosts, do ghosts look, get older when they die? You know, like maybe they'll do some movie magic with it or something. Oh, and don't, don't tell me that because now it's giving me. Uh, it was a Billy Loomis vibes, you know. Like, Indiana Jones Five, man. Enjoy. Get, uh, be prepared. Be prepared because you're gonna see a lot of it. Oh, I'm, you're gonna see a lot of it. I don't like it. I don't like it. This is it's scaring me, man. It's like, all right. Did you so see that the trailer? Means, no. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I did. I did. I I saw some of it, but I don't. I saw like the first trailer. I'm trying yeah. not to watch the trailers for stuff because. Yeah. I'm getting it's ruining the movies. Um, they do it in indie films too. They they ruin their own movies, and I'm like, don't put so much fucking shit in the trailers. You know, yeah. we don't need to see the whole story in two minutes. You know, we right? Just, you just show the beginning of it. You know, I've heard that a lot about um, filmmakers these days um, that they they are not uh, they're just putting too much into their films in the sense of like trailers i remember when i released the first terrific Guild monsters trailer one of the complaints were um that it was too long and, and the reason why it was too long is because it gave too much of the story away so we went back to the editing room i recut a new trailer and that is the trailer we use from now on but um that's out there if you watch it you'll know exactly what i mean by it yeah well there you go. if anybody watches that Horrific trail, you know, <laughs> horrific. Wow, that well, sounds terrible. Horrific monsters yeah. trail, but like horrific trailer. <laughs> um, yeah, you. We get you. Yeah. So if you check that out, good. Um. So what else have you been up to? So you got you got the new Ombus movie. Um, yes. Are you doing anything else? Um, I'm working on a book actually. Nice. Um, who knows when that will be uh, ever made? But um, I've been working on that for a couple of years. Um, then, um, I'm going to produce at some point or co-produce, I should say a documentary on my filmmaking career. Um, Oh, very cool. Yeah. One of the things that I have done for many years is I've kept a lot of footage behind the scenes footage that no one has seen from all my films. So I'm going to eventually release that in a feature film in some fashion, um, and I'm excited about that. It gives a little bit more history about me and the care and the characters and the stories and the universe of horror films. I've been trying to tell uh, with inside this uh, gore verse is what we call it. Um, and uh, yeah, that is going to probably be one of my retirement projects. Nice. And um, I- I'm just going to continue to be a big supporter of the film industry, do marketing on previous titles, things of that nature. But that is where my career is looking. So I'm looking probably when I get to my early forties to be on a, a path to either the final film or, uh, you know, on the path to a temporary hiatus. Uh, and then whatever happens from there on out, either if I make another one or I don't, um, that's where I lie. So you're sort of pulling a uh, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. I noticed he's, he, he just what is he just kind of announced recently that he may be, or, Somebody said that he filed something for his final film. Yep. It's and you called know, the movie critic or something like that. And Which... you have to ask yourself as a director, as a storyteller, when is enough enough 
And when have you done the film? Like, what film should you end on? And for me, I just don't feel that I should be ending on a grim miniseries as my last project. And because Ambus was so well received and such has such a huge fan base, the most popular film ever made next to Prisoners of the Dead. Um, and I say, you know what, this might be a good opportunity to explore that last project, you know, uh, and tell that story and maybe go out on a high note. Who knows? Maybe maybe I'll go out on a high note with it. I uh, I was just thinking uh, Tarantino's last film should should have been a Tarantino multiverse movie. You know, where he just has all the characters from all his different movies come back and, uh, you know, they all have to meet up and, and have one last well, little... Do you remember, I don't know if you know this, but Zorro and uh, uh, Django were supposed mm-hmm. to do a film together. And then they were going to do like a comic or something, or they did a comic yeah. for it or whatever. I actually just bought stuff. The Mask of Zorro. I love that movie. Was that the Antonio Banderas one? Yeah, the first, yeah. there's two of them. There's that one and then The Legend of Zorro, which I think I want to get next. But yeah, I just picked it up in a steelbook from Best Buy and it's so good. It's so funny that Ben Darris has done both Mask of Zorro and Puss in Boots. Yeah. Like, well, his, 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 his filmography is interesting because he has a wide range. The Mexican, wasn't it? He wasn't he in that one? Yeah. Uh, and then the Desperado. And... Desperado. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I actually meant was that once, one. Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Once Upon a Time. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he has a wide range. And then he did Spy Kids. Didn't he do Spy Kids? Yeah. He was the, and, I, and he was also in The Four Rooms. You know, Four Rooms. Classic movie. That is a great film, by the way. I own that film. Uh, you know, it was it was fun, I think. Oh, you don't like it. I don't hate it, but uh, I like the Tarantino skit and the Rodriguez skit. The other two skits don't really do anything for me. Um, oh, and... the which one is the one with the bed? Uh, the 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 hooker in the bed. Oh, that's uh, Rodriguez. Yes, I love that. That's my favorite one. Yeah, that was my favorite one too. Then Tarantino had one where it's like, uh, that's the finger off. Yeah, because the finger off and it's like Hollywood ish, and yeah, you can just tell the dialogue is so Tarantino. Uh, but the other ones are like there's like a witch's one. Uh, that I'm like, oh, like this just felt. I think like yeah, I didn't like that one. I with think the Allison cauldron Anders and did it, and uh, what with the cauldron, yeah, and the naked chick, and she comes out of it, yeah. And then there's a uh, there's one other one where I see that's why I don't like it because I just totally it's totally forgettable. Oh, I know um, what it was. I know what it was. It was the guy with the girlfriend. It was the guy with the girlfriend with the gun. And he go. Uh, he accidentally paged into or plugged into the wrong room and all that. And he goes oh, okay. up there to deliver something, and he's got a gun, and his wife is all tied up, and they're That's like having it. Like yeah, a sex fetish or something. Didn't like it, but yeah, it was. You right. know, it's, it's funny because, like, I mean, two out of four ain't bad. Yeah, you know, but it's funny because those are the two last ones, I believe. And so you have to sit through the first two and. The the well, first one had um the which one had the chick from uh that I like uh from fuck what's that movie uh or was that show um was it, it wasn't it was Sybil um Sybil's daughter or whatever um in it I think it was Sybil um the the girl the red hair girl um yeah I know who you're talking about I can't picture what film it is that she's done though. Uh, Alicia Witt. Uh, okay, she's yeah. Been a shit ton of movies. She's in Vanilla in the Sky, Urban Legend. She was the lead in Urban Legend. She was in Dune, the David Lynch one, a uh, mm-hmm. bunch of stuff. So I love her. I adore her. Wasn't she in? Uh, wasn't she in Hot Pursuit or uh, Hot Shots? Rather, wasn't she in Hot Shots also? Hmm. I think it's the same girl I'm thinking of. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I wouldn't. It might be Hot Shots Part Two. Yeah, <laughs> Part Deluxe or Ducks or what? Yeah, yeah. What did you say it was called? It was part part two. two. Yeah. Two. Um, you like those films? <laughs> um, no? yeah, I think they're okay. They're they're not. Yeah. Uh, they're they're just silly. No, she wasn't in that one. She wasn't in the those. I'm trying to think of who. Let's see, four rooms, who you might be thinking of, because I'm sure there's somebody who is in um, 
uh, the missing ingredient. It was called the missing ingredient. Was the thing? Um, Madonna was in it. I didn't even know that. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot. forgot. In that segment, she was actually in. Yeah. Um. Let's see. She was. Lily Taylor from The Conjuring was in it. Jesus. That's a great cast. I own Sky from uh, Say Anything. You know, she was uh, she was in in that segment. You know, like that's a mm -hmm. great cast of women. But like the story lacked a lot. Yeah, yeah it just was not interesting to me, uh, which kind of sucks for short because, you know, like a short, you need something to grab you, you know? Yeah. And like I, a short you, you amount know, of time. Yeah, and you know that's funny you say that because everybody seems to be wanting to get into that grungy horror again. Um, a lot of the like people that I talk to, interest parties, when I look at horror forums and stuff, because I look and research this shit all day long, and I want to make a film for the the market. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, that's a smart way to look at it. And I look at the forums and I see what people are talking about. Science fiction is always hot. Zombies are always hot. Um, and then I started thinking. You know, we're talking about the end of the career that I've been kind of trying to chat out, chart out my final stories. Um, I look at a Fang sequel, too, possibly. I don't want to be known for just sequels, but out of the films that I really adored, those are the two that I loved. And to do a Fang sequel with the really grungy, disgusting horror again to push the bars, that would be kind of fun. I would like to yeah, do something like that. You should do that. Yeah, I, I will see, see. You keep saying things that are going to make you keep making more movies. So people say don't that. Worry. What? Yeah. Yeah. People say that. People say you always, you always be, you know, you just say that right now. But I'm, I'm getting to a point where I think, I, I think it, I think I'm just, I think I'm getting to the end, man. I really do. As you director. said, you made sixteen films, though, right? I either produced. Uh, I've directed like ten feature films. Yes, uh, this will be my eleventh, uh, Ambas. Can't uh, end so, on eleventh though. By the way, you can't. You know, that's oh, just. Uh, is this a wrong number? Well, I mean, it's just a. Odd it's just a, to me, I hate odd numbers. Me per personally, so I gotta the go only 12. odd numbers I'm okay with are like fifteen. You know, where it's got like five till you're there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why I'm okay with fifteen, but I'm not okay with like seventeen. You know, like <laughs> I would hate that. You know, and, uh, yeah. my friends all laugh at me. I'm. Very much, uh, I, if I have the choice between an odd number and an even number, even if the even number is lower, I will go lower, you know, just because I don't like odd numbers. I'm weird, you know. I, I think hey, you know what? Even. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe you'll have to inspire me to do number 12 in a couple of years. Right. Well, that's why I'm so glad that uh, Tarantino's ending it on his 10th. You know, mm. I'm nice like, if you did number. it on your ninth, I'd be so annoyed. <laughs> You'd be like, no, I would write to Tarantino. I'd be like, Tarantino, you must, you must do this. And he'll be like, who the fuck are you? And then go well, back. you know, uh, just to kind of conclude on the Grim miniseries thing, just real brief, you know, my wife created that. So I kind of nice. like, we were talking about, um, doing outsourcing of things, masks and prosthetics and, you know, stories, you know, she came to me, pitched this idea and I just sprinkled in a little bit of the Grim Reaper and she, uh, she did everything. She, I mean, she wrote everything uh, and Good. I produced and directed it. So you could see again, getting to a point where I'm help, you know, I'm doing something, but I'm not, it's not me spending hours writing a story or whatever. It's, it's me working on it, of course, but I don't I had know. A, I had a moment uh back in 2010. So it was a long time ago. Uh 13 mm. years ago, Jesus. Um, where I was like this close to just quitting the industry, you know. And it wasn't because of people or Facebook, it was because of how stressful, you know, making your movie is, you know. And oh god. People, people don't, don't know. People don't realize this. People no. think, you know, people think like you just say this and then put it out and then it's done. And it's, you know, it's a lot more work. Um, but uh, I was, I was so burnt out and I was tired and I was talking to um, an actress and I was like, I think I'm going to quit direct producing and directing movies. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me, she goes, well, what are you going to do? And go, maybe just write, you know, 
Like, because right. writing, man, like, that's what I want to be right now. I just want to be a writer. Cause, like, yeah. um, like, honestly, I'm writing right now and I have never had the best time of my life, you know, than I am when I'm just sitting at my computer by myself, typing shit out right at night having a blast like that is my happy place um and maybe it'll get stressful when i'm doing rewrites and i have to have a deadline or something like that you know because right now there's right. no deadline i can do what the fuck i want but well, that's good man that's good yeah. for you that you have that ability too that's really good but here's the thing you know i must be on sets you know and i'm so glad i never quit i never did i i, I didn't because i loved it you know, I would always go to somebody's sets, but some people get intimidated very easily about or with me when I go on their sets. You know, I have a certain procedure of how I handle things. I'm very contract oriented. I'm budget oriented. I am schedule. That's the biggest thing. Schedule oriented because no one's time is more important than my time. You know what I mean? And that goes mm-hmm. for you, too. You no one's more important than your time. So that should be everybody. I, like Everybody right. should feel that way about themselves. Right. So if you're coming to my set, we're going to have a good time, but we're going to be in and out. We're not here to to joke around all day. Mm-hmm. I can't do those 24-hour shoots no more. I'm not a young man anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, have no, a rule I get that. Now. I have a rule now that I have to be off set 12 hours. It's union standards, and I'm, I adapted it. We have to be off 12 sets, or 12 sets, 12 hours, and then you come back. Uh, that's the minimum that you'd have to be off set. So I adapted that policy so that you can rest, rejuvenate, um, I try to shoot for eight hour days. Sometimes I'm not lucky with it, but I won't go past 10 or 12 is generally the rule. Oh yeah. Um, we had one shoot that just kept going and shit. And the actress that we had, um, I'm not going to say her name or anything. Just don't call yeah. her out on this. Cause this is sort of, this was my, my mistake. And I didn't realize this. And this might be very helpful for, for indie filmmakers to understand. Um, when you have a lead actress or actor or somebody who you are having from out of town, mm-hmm. you need to get them done first. Yes. You know, same uh, with you extras. Can, yeah. Same with extras. You can always bring another actor who's local back, but you cannot keep an actor, actor, or actress waiting. And I yep. did that as a mistake um, because uh because we wanted to get one guy done in one day so that he didn't have to drive two hours to come back like the next day or something, you know, right. Which, you know, the whole idea is like, then we lost a lot of work that we, that we had to make up the next day with that mm-hmm. act actress. And she couldn't, she couldn't do her stuff. She had to go to bed. Like mm-hmm. she was like, at that time she had to work in the morning and like, she right. was, doing zooming and stuff so she kind of had a she had a freak out like you know thing moment where she was really upset and i pulled her to the side you know because i don't want to say all this stuff in front of everybody and i said what's 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 going on why are you and she was telling me she was really mad that i wasted i'm wasting a lot of her time here when we need to get this done you know and stuff and we need to get her stuff done and and everything and i said I totally understand. I know you're tired right now. I know you can't do it. So just go to bed. We'll shoot around you tonight. I'll have you come back and we'll, or tomorrow we'll get all the rest of your stuff. And it'll be all you tomorrow, you know, and yeah. stuff. And she was really happy about that and various, but you know, but she was, I mean, it's a learning experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was looking back today, uh, earlier today, rather, and I said, you know, I've only had one pic, uh, film, picture, however you want to say it, um, that I ever announced that I um, that I actually had to cancel. We were, you know, a film called Meet the Loonies. I posted about this earlier today. It's the only film out of my filmmaking career that I announced but never made. And then publicly had to retract and say we end up canceling the film. Um, that was for many reasons, but it goes back to partly ego. Uh, not mine specifically, but uh, one of the lead actors um, had a money ego ish money, money ego trip. Even after offering thousands, they still wanted more. And I said, you know what? The project's not worth 
that you're not worth that. And I ended up pulling the plug, but that was a very hard time for me because I was going through a lawsuit over Ombus to try to get the rights back to it. And uh, so I had to make a decision because I was also directing in post-production star. So I had like three big things going on. I said, you know what? We're going to cut the loonies, use that budget that I got left over or had left over to finish star. And I actually provided star to another editor and worked on this lawsuit uh, to get the rights back to the film. And I'm glad I did, but you know, star suffered as a result of that film or excuse me, of, as a result of all that. And the loonies, um, I don't think I'll ever work with that actor again uh, because they put such a poor taste in my mouth. So. Well, I mean, if you did you like the story from the loonies? Yes. And I ended up taking a lot of elements of the story of the loonies and putting it into Fang. OK, that's what I was so, going to suggest if you. Yeah, you know, it lived you on. Not necessarily want to redo it again, but like do something similar to it or whatever. So that yeah. works. You know. Yeah, it worked out. But at the same time, I mean, it was just the level of disrespect an actor could give to somebody that specifically wrote a film for them, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the context until it became the context because they were looking for excuses probably to get out of it, which I, I don't understand, especially with the amount of money they were being offered. So whatever, water underneath the bridge. But I was just thinking about that today, um, you know, so. Yeah, it happens. Um, there's a lot of, there's always a lot of ego, but there's a lot of ego and, you know, working at Walmart, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. you know, I worked at Walmart and I, dealt with a lot of ego and shit and stuff. And I'm like, dude, you work at Walmart, man. Yeah. Like you're not curing cancer right now. So like, right. you know, don't take life too seriously, but you know, um, but then again, it's a job, you know, yeah. and some people do take their job, you know, very seriously, you know, right. or whatever. And right. so, and some people might take it, way too seriously and might under may not well th this actor that i'm thinking of right now did it dis very disrespectfully very disrespectfully they kept demanding more money and i would keep finding them more money than they would say i don't like this in the script after already telling me oh, like Jesus. so i i was to the point where you know what who are you you're, you're just done I, yeah i said who are you i don't care who, what type of name you have you're not you know this this isn't your film it's it's my film and if you're going to degrade it like that, then I don't want you in it. So yep. that, that relationship has been ever forever tarnished, unfortunately. Well, you know, sadly that happens a lot in this industry. Maybe you can start off with an apology. That would be a good start for him. Yeah, well, even then, I don't know if it, it's worth it. Sometimes I it isn't. I, I think the thing is here's here's the biggest thing I learned, and I don't know if this is how you feel or whatever, but it's not it's not called show friends it's called show, right. business. show business and a lot of times when you get involved with people it becomes a friend thing like yeah i'm working with you you're my friend let's work together bad things might happen you know or whatever most because, times they do yeah most times they do and then you have to pull business over friendship and they don't like it so you guys cut ties as friends and that right. sucks. But in the same sense, um, you just can't let that, you know, cause I have a lot of people that I've worked with in some way or another that have now don't like me, you know, because of one thing or another that happened yeah. in our business deals and yeah. stuff. And then in the beginning, I, once again, people pleaser in me is like, Oh my God, why do these people not like me? This is terrible. What can I do right. about it? And uh, now right. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You don't like me. Yeah, I'm me. to that point too, right? Yeah. I If you don't like Very me, right. it's fine. I mean, I, I can't be loved by everybody. Um, There are people I still love. And if they didn't like me, I'd be a, I'd be sad. But oh, after yeah, a while, course. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to like, be like, I just don't care anymore. You know, after a while, because unless I can bring that relationship back, I can't, you know? Um. I know that feeling because I've invested in actors and actresses, two that I can think of specifically that I like went all in on. You know, I advertised them. I worked with them. I developed a career. One of them, you went to college for for the, the art of film and acting. 
uh, as a result. And, you know, these people are now better than me or better than working with me, or I don't know how you want to say it. They're, they're above working with me, yeah. not because they've achieved something, but because they, I guess we're wronged in some way, or we're not doing union related projects or what, I mean, whatever the issue might be. But um, I know that feeling of feeling like you have a lot of, like, I know a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people too. Um, I've been on sets where there's a couple hundred to almost a thousand people before. And I've been on sets that were like three or four people. So, you know, I understand camaraderie. I understand creativity, but I also understand the business now. I didn't in the beginning, like you were saying, people pleaser, that was me. I would sell my soul to get a film made. Now I'm not so has, uh, I'm not so hasty, if you will, to, uh, to go out and do that. You're more hesitant. Very much so. Oh yeah. And that makes sense. Um, and I think, I feel like, you know, you have to get to a point in your career where you're just willing to understand that, like, I'm going to have to sacrifice friendships that maybe aren't, you know, I, some of them, if I looked back at some of these friendships, they were very toxic. Um, and I didn't think of them as toxic. Yeah. You didn't realize in the time you're in, you were too much in the moment. Right. Um, Right you know, and, and things like that. But sometimes it's really great that like the world works out the way it's supposed to, you know, um, I'm getting to that uh, perception as well. I am. I've introduced uh, people to other people and then they've left me for that person. Yes. I've done that too. Gave me a lot of abandonment issues, you know, fear of abandonment issues and stuff. Yeah. And, and that's, and it's fine because now I've sort of sort of accepted the fact that you know what I'm sort of doing a, a service to these people because they w- if they want to fuck me over to work together, then they deserve each other, you know, kind of yeah. thing and that feeling and stuff. And I mean and and wonderful, you know, some of them have gone on to create amazing film projects that I yeah. will forever tell them you know, to their face, like these were guys, some that made things that like, why'd you make this? You went from me to this. Yeah. Yeah. But then still, you know, like they continue yeah. to work. So, I mean, you probably know some of them, you know, and stuff. Well, we do have a lot of cross. Um, yeah. We, we have a lot of mutuals, you know, yeah. which wonderful. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't hate like, look, if you're out there making an indie film, fucking good for you, you know? Right. Uh, if you break out from indie and go, go Hollywood, yeah, that's even better. Like I'm, I, uh, I'm not gonna be like one of those people that are bitter and yelling at like why do they get to go do that? You know, right. I'm like they they work their ass off, they got where they're at. You know, that's that's their you know that's the thing. So I'm okay with it. But is there anything else you wanted to kind of let people know about? Is there Projects and stuff. um, Not specifically projects. No. um, I just want to say thank you for giving me some time to speak. I know we've been talking for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, more longer than we were planning to. But I told you you had to stop me. You had to stop. uh, You know, you have to stop me too. I talked way too much. And I would Um, love to do this again if you ever are interested in in talking. And we there's just so much we can continue on with. More updates. I'm sure we can get with the. The nonsensical DC universe, I could tell you that. Yeah, I um, mean, we that could be an old, old podcast. Its own show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I I wasn't gonna let people know, like they can watch a lot of your movies on Tubi. So, yeah, you know, they should go we're do on, that right now. Yeah, we're on every streaming platform in some fashion, either wow. Vudu, uh, iTunes, um, Google Plex. Play. We're on everything. Tubi is very, we love Tubi. Tubi's, we've made a good relationship with Tubi. Um, so, um, yeah, I would definitely uh, recommend checking some of the films out because they're good. There you go. Um, or they're bad and you should shoot the director. Stop that. Like, sorry, sorry, sorry. You sorry. keep bringing it up. You're really, I think you feel uh, terrible about that. That's sad. Because that comment uh, really hurt me. That comment really I hurt know, me. No, but like, it shouldn't. And then I, oh, I, like, I, I don't even know who it was. I don't even know the person. I don't I know. know who you it probably was. don't even I can't remember find the name. Now. Right. You know? Just and, the thought, and, though, that people want that is, is hard to, to swallow, you know? But, you know, anybody can say whatever the fuck they want on the internet. 
And most of the time they don't really even feel that way. You know what I mean? They're just right. in a bad mood and they, you caught them on a bad day and they watched your movie and they were like, I don't like this movie, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to say, I don't like piece. the director. <laughs> I don't like the director, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, you keep watching his movies. Yeah. Like, you know, if he, if he's, if this person is so bent out of shape that he doesn't like your films and he's still watching them, that says something about that. Him. Says something. That says, <laughs> yes, that, it does. It says something more. So just, yeah. Hang in there, man, because that person likes your shit. He's a fan. Yeah, he you know, definitely only is. fans continue to watch the films and watch. If he listens to this, if you're out there and you you said that nasty ass comment, you're still watching his movies. You know, um, that's on you, bro. You know, <laughs> that that's completely on you, and you fucked up. So yeah, big time. Uh, you know, if, if he's gonna keep making them because they're fucking. They're, you know, I mean, they're not easy to make, but they're, you know, they're definitely not easy, but they are, you know, but they are something you're passionate about. So don't stop because some douchebag saying, now, if he said, I know where you live or, you know, something like that, I'd be a little bit more worried. Um, Like, once again, go back to Siskel and Ebert saying, here's the address of somebody. That's, that's a little bit uh, sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, so. uh, well, anyways, my friend, I, it's always great to speak with you. You know that, uh, I'm one of your, your biggest, uh, cheerleaders uh, and fans. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. You're the only one. That's okay. Oh yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, um, it, it's, it was a pleasure talking with you dude, because like, like you and me, we both have sort of similar, yeah, you know, feelings and similar stuff. And I mean, you said you've been doing this since what, 2000 and, 10 I've been, maybe earlier i've been doing it uh on and off since 2003 but i took it serious in 2008 yeah see same here well i mean i did the short film stuff yeah you know in 2002 and then i really i started independent corner to sort of get you know understanding of what it took to make a indie film you know right. or whatever and right. stuff and try to get advice i don't know if i listened necessarily <laughs> If I did, well, that's, I how you, probably, that's how you learn. Is you don't listen, and then you, you make don't the mistakes. listen, and then you make all the fuck, fucking mistakes, yeah. and then you, then you go, oh, okay, and then I re-listen, and I go, I should have done that. Yeah. So, there you go. I think the best film schools are commentary tracks. That's my opinion. Yes. Yes. Oh my god, I love doing commentary tracks too. Like you watch a film. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, like well, tra- I mean, I did sometime. mine, and I was trying to figure out what like technical shit to put in it because i didn't want a commentary track where i was like we did this and that person did that and that you know what i mean like and that happened in that you know thing the key you know, is I, to have more than one person in it don't just do it on your yourself you know well, actually, cast i like members, ones so. that are by my by themselves but i don't like talking oh, by myself yeah? but no. i like um there's brett kelly a uh, wonderful director from canada who made a movie called The Feral Man, and it's got one of the best commentary tracks. And it's just him on the commentary track talking about how he made his first film. That's yeah. amazing. You know, you, like, know what's, you know what's also interesting? is Our paths seem to have not only aligned in some fashion throughout the years, but our progression in the arts seem to have coincided simultaneously. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You were doing the same things. Well, you did more features fight. than I have. Yeah, yeah I've really done more features. Any. But you've done more podcasts than I have. You've talked to more people. You've done films. Short films can count. Yeah, and um, I mean, I made a feature of Scary Story Slumber Party out of short films. But so there you go. You know, yeah. So I, I, it's almost like and it gets annoying because I'm like, I want you to review it. Oh, I don't review anthologies. What? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. I mean, I get it because it's hard to kind of you have to rate them by my each individual movie instead of like all together necessarily you know so yeah. i get it but well it's just like it's frustrating because i'm like it's it's better than like it's it should be better i mean i don't know i like it you know yeah. i'm a little biased but I you're like a little it. biased yeah i was gonna say you're just a little bit of bias a little, a little bit, bias but it's okay yeah. it's okay um but um yeah it's just man. the same as i'm sure you'll say your movies are 
are great. You know, well, there's some I would. There's of, one. There's one I would say is not so great, but we'll we'll say that for a different podcast. <laughs> all right, let you figure that one out. I don't even want to think about that. Good, it's, you know. Good, good. Let's good, just good. say you you enjoyed all the work that you've done. So. Yes, I love everything I do. It's yes. it's. Uh, I praise the 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 sand that I walk on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, it's good to talk to you, and um, I, I hope we do this again soon. Yeah, we'll do this again. Maybe I'll get you on uh, Indie Film Cafe as a uh, guest reviewer, and then you oh. can take shots at uh, yeah, at stuff. Professional yeah. shots. Yes. Constructive. constructive. Yes, criticism. constructive. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, just like you, I'm kind of sick of people not being constructive. And we try to be constructive when we do stuff mm-hmm. because we're out there going, well, this sucks, and that's it. You know, yeah. like that's not, we yeah. try to tell them why we think these aren't good. And it's usually based on sound or, you know, right. people are like, right. people are like, well, you know, difficult to use to so get good sound. I'm like, it's then if you, if you can't get good sound for a movie, then don't make a movie. You know? Yeah, like, that, is, that sounds that terrible, is a good rule. but that's a good rule. Yeah. If you can't get good sound, if you can't get good lighting and you're like, and you're using that excuse as, well, I it's too expensive to do that. Then I'm like, then don't do it, because right. you, you know, like people are paying to see a movie. They want to see or hear a movie. Yes, know? I mean, yeah. and I that's what I can clearly say. Everything I've seen of yours, you can hear that. You can hear what people are saying. You can see what they're what what they're doing, and I mean, some of, some of the acting might be, you know, low budget. You know, actors and stuff yeah. acting. But like that's what you're going to see if somebody's going and thinking they're saying, you know, the next dawn of the dead, mm-hmm. that's completely different, you know. Then they should be warned ahead of time. This is a low budget film with, with no, you know, with the no budget cast, you know, or whatever. So. Right. Right. Well, thank you so much, Adam. It was a pleasure having you on the show, and like I said, you're welcome back. And uh, we would love to have you as a guest reviewer at some point. Cause... Yeah, let's talk about that. I'd love to be a part of it. Definitely. Um, and everybody else, uh, join me in two weeks. Uh, I'll have uh, Amber Doig uh, Thorne on the show. So uh, you'll check her out. She's the, yeah, she's the, uh, she, she got to go face to face with uh, toe to toe with uh, fucking Piglet, you know, mm. and the Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Until then, have a good one. Bye.